So the moment the Ryan McDonough trade was made, which sent him from Tampa Bay to Nashville for what was ultimately a package that you didn't really think was all too valuable comparative to McDonough himself in Philip Myers and Grant Mismash, I was kind of thinking to myself the whole time, there's something going on here that we haven't really seen yet, because... At the end of the day, the Tampa Bay Lightning have lost this trade. Now, sure, contextually speaking, they did not lose. They actually won because they got rid of the cap hit. They get themselves Philip Myers, whom, if they buy out, they will actually get some more cap relief. So, even though the Tampa Bay Lightning lost because they gave up a very legitimate, very valuable NHL-caliber defenseman for an AHL forward and an AHL D-man they're probably going to buy out, they win in the sense that they free up all the money they needed to free up in order to re-sign some other guys. But you don't usually see trades go down like this where it's so mismatched. Ah ha ha! Mismatched! There you go! On the value side of things, but it's still done either way because both of the teams say yes to it. Of course, Nashville traded away some scraps they had, Mismash and a Philip Myers, whom they really did not get the most out of, for a legitimately good defenseman in Ryan McDonough. As we said, he's making $6.75 million a year till 2026. He's got a no-trade clause, which is very interesting. We're going to have to point that out as the video goes on, which means that he had to waive his no-trade clause to go over to Nashville. Now, we said initially in the video, hey, you know, Nashville is pretty close by to Tampa Bay. Nashville also has no state tax. So maybe out of all the locations McDonough would have waved to, Nashville was pretty high up on the priority list. So he was okay with that. And now he's going over to a team that bolsters up some pretty good defensive players already in Ekholm and Yossi, etc., etc., right? But if you go over onto the recent edition of the Kipper and Bourne show, you really start to get a feel as to how ruthless the situation really was behind the scenes. This wasn't just, oh, hey, Ryan, you want to wave for Nashville? Oh, sure, I'll wave for Nashville. You guys can free up the cap space. Okay, great. And he gets sent over. It's not just like that. There were a lot more layers to this, and Ryan McDonough himself apparently wasn't really all too on board with the idea of getting traded to Nashville in the first place, but he ultimately acquiesced because of a few threats. Now, the video will be in the description. There is a clip on David, or excuse me, Davey Upper's Twitter account. It's a minute 20 long. It goes over the same segment. The clip to the full audio hit is also linked there as well. You can see the clip has 1,200 likes as Nick Kiprios explains why McDonough accepted a trade to Nashville. And if I had to try to summarize everything that Kiprios says right here, I'll go over it in my own words. So, firstly... Bourne goes out there and he says, hey, it's kind of weird that McDonough was even traded, right? Because the guy has kids, the guy has Stanley Cups, he's got a no-trade clause, he's got a family and a life in Tampa Bay. This guy deserves all the respect in the world for being a multi-time champion with this team and a three-time finalist, right? How the heck do you still get traded when you have a no-trade clause and you've been so dedicated and successful with the Tampa Bay Lightning? Kiprios then says that it's ugly the way the salary cap is structured in today's NHL world where you're a player like Ryan McDonough who gives his heart and soul, his family, and his life to a team like Tampa Bay, and he gets success, but at the end of the day, they still have to move him, despite the fact that he has a no-trade clause. And so Kiprios described that the way it was described to him was that the Lightning went up to McDonough and they said, hey, we have a few teams that actually are interested in your services for a trade. And apparently McDonough was like, okay, he doesn't really want to get traded in the first place, so he was kind of unhappy even hearing that he was on the block in that sort of way. But Lego, he has a no-trade clause. He has the right to veto any trade that comes along on the table, right? But that's the thing. Ryan McDonough has a no-trade clause, not a no-move clause. There's a difference between the two. A no-trade clause means you're allowed to veto any trade that involves your name. A no-move clause means you're not allowed to move anywhere. Sure, that includes the qualifications that are fulfilled by the no-trade clause. If you have a no-move clause, you have the same rights as a no-trade clause, but you also get a little bit more. If you have a no-move clause, it means you're not allowed to go down either. You're not allowed to get sent down to the AHL, and you're not allowed to get put on waivers. Nick Kiprios described the situation as such. If Ryan McDonough did not accept a trade to any of the teams that Tampa Bay had at the table, they would have waived him. And they already had a prior commitment from the Columbus Blue Jackets, who were pretty high up in the waiver order, saying, yeah, okay, if you waive Ryan McDonough, we're going to take him. Come on, Julian Breezeball, wave the guy. We're going to take him here in Columbus. Let's go, let's go, let's go. And so, for Ryan McDonough, 
it seems like the Tampa Bay Lightning gave him an ultimatum that said, okay, look, Ryan, we have to get rid of you, buddy. Sorry, but we have to do this. If you don't accept the trade to any of these teams, we're just going to waive you because we can. And you're going to get claimed by Columbus and you're going to get sent over to that organization because we already know they're going to claim you. And we, at the end of the day, are going to get rid of you. Now, maybe they weren't as harsh as I was describing it there, but that's essentially the message they sent to this guy. And ultimately, for Ryan McDonough, he was like, okay, even though I might not be particularly thrilled to go to the Nashville Predators, as Kiprios described in his audio hit, it's better than Columbus. Because the team, they finished a lot better in the standings than Columbus did. Nashville itself is closer to Tampa Bay. And also, the state tax, as well as the lifestyle, you know, Nashville is very fun and vibrant and everything with its country music and its roots and all that. So maybe there was a little bit more desirability to go over to that city than any of the others that were presented in a trade-like scenario. But that is absolutely freaking ruthless. Isn't it? Ryan McDonough has a no-trade clause which gives him the right to veto any trade, but he's forced to give it up because if he does not accept a trade to any of these teams, he's going to get waived and go over to a team in Columbus that he doesn't have any control over. The Blue Jackets, I mean, they're not really doing anything bad here. They just kind of told Tampa Bay, yeah, I mean, if he's on waivers, we'll take him. It's just Tampa going out there and using that as leverage to give Ryan McDonough the opportunity to get a trade underway. That's pretty ruthless. That's brutal, man. Like, seriously, talk about getting trapped in a corner here. Like, obviously hockey is a business, right? But the human inside of me, the empath, the human element to this story, you can't help but feel for Ryan McDonough. I mean, the guy just happened to be the odd man out for all these other players. The Tampa Bay Lightning had to go out there and re-sign. You have Andre Palat, you have Anthony Shirelli, you have Nick Paul, who just got his deal done earlier this week, so good on him for getting the bag. We already said Shirelli, but he's going to be on there for next year. Same with Alex Kalorn, Ross Colton, and Mikhail Sergachev are going to need money soon. Once you buy out Philippe Myers, you're going to get some more cap relief for this season. And for the Tampa Bay Lightning, they ended up getting some assets, Grant Mismash and that buy-outable Philip Myers that they could get more cap space from, for a guy that they were willing to actually lose out on for free via waivers in Ryan McDonough. And it's not like McDonough is even a bad player. I mean, the guy had 26 points in 71 games played. He was a very solid top four defenseman who could play top two minutes when Victor Hedman was out. You have yourselves a player that is legitimately valuable. And sure, he might be 33. He might be making almost $7 million till the guy's 37 years old. And that might not be ideal. But imagine waving this guy because you just could not afford him anymore. That's wild, man. So for Nashville, good on you guys for exploiting the situation, for ultimately being the destination that McDonough said yes to, even though it appears that he wasn't really all too thrilled to having to say yes to any team in the first place. But at the end of the day, Ryan McDonough is now a Nashville Predator. He's playing on a pretty stacked decor. You've got Fabro, Ekholm, Yossi. You used to have Subban. You used to have Ellis. This is a pretty good defensively oriented hockey club. So we'll see how McDonough translates talent-wise over there, but talk to the comments like your thoughts about how ruthless the whole situation was, Nick Kiprios' comments and assessment of the situation, the blackmailing, the ultimatum, the ruthlessness of how the Lightning conducted their business here. Obviously, business is business, and business is always going to be like that, but the human element to this entire story should not go unfazed, and to me, that is absolutely brutal. I hope you enjoyed this video of Trolls 99, and... Bye.